Hello friends, welcome to this video. And in this video, we are going to implement the unit R in the PyTorch framework. So before moving on to the next part of the video, make sure that you subscribe the channel for more such videos. So our first question is what is unit R? So we can say it's a three dimensional medical image segmentation model that uses a transformer encoder and a CNN based decoder to predict the segmentation mass. So in the right side you can see the block diagram of this unit R. Now the key features of the unit R. First it uses vision transformer as encoder to learn global contextual representation. Second it uses a CNN decoder to upsample the global representation and generate the final segmentation mask. So in simple term we can say it's unit R is basically vision transformer plus CNN decoder. Now this is the block diagram of the unit architecture taken from the original paper. As we are going to implement it for the 2D segmentation. So please make sure that you remove this D part whenever you see this diagram. Okay because D refers to depth. And when we work with 2D, we just only have one as our depth. So we don't have any special kind of depth with this. So we only have height, width and number of channels. Okay. And here instead of this four channel image, we are going to use an RGB image. So it began with an image and then we have linear pro projection. Then we have embedded patching. Okay. And after that we have this uh, in transformer encoder block. Okay. And after that begins the CNN decoder part. So we'll use this uh, block diagram and implement the complete unit architecture for 2D segmentation. Now our next question is what is vision transformer? So vision transformer or in simple we can see VIT is an architecture that is used for image recognition. It is based on the transformer architecture which was originally developed for natural language processing. VITs have been shown to achieve state of the art result on a variety of image recognition tasks including ImageNet classification. So here in the right side you can see a simple diagram of the VIT. So how does it work? Let's understand it in short. So we have a complete image. Here this image is in patches. Okay. Let's now just imagine this is a complete image and what we do? We just crop it into different patches. We have different crops of it. Okay, and then we flatten them. Okay, we not flatten them. We we just mm, align them in a sequence. Then we pass them via a linear uh, layer, which flattens them and do some learning operation. And after that, we add this positional embedding. That is the zero, one, two, three. Okay, and then we pass this information to the transformer encoder, and it does the classification. So for the classification task. It adds the extra class embedding. Okay, this here we star represent this extra embedding because in our in our task we'll use this vision transformer for segmentation. So we will not implement this extra class embedding. But in my previous videos where I've implemented vision transformer for uh, image classification in TensorFlow, I have used this extra class uh, embedding for classification. You can find the link of those videos in the description okay so let's move on to the next so for the implementation of the unit r we will use the vit base as this is used in the original paper so these are the parameter which are used in the vit base okay now our one of the important thing before we begin working with transformer is how to convert the complete image into patches. So this is one of the important question. So let's say this is the size of our image that is 512 by 512. So it's an RGB image and we are going to transform it into patches. So here we have 256 patches and the size of each patch is 32 by 32. Okay. So it's these patches are also going to be RGB. Now let's move next. Here we'll understand it with the example. Here in the left we have a bit of th theory and in the right we have example. So let's understand them simultaneously. 
सो फॉर ईच इनपुट इमेज वी हैव हाइट विथ एंड नंबर ऑफ चैनल इन द एग्जांपल आवर इनपुट इमेज इज 200 बाय 200 देन वी हैव पैच हाइट एंड पैच विड्थ सो लेट अस अज्यूम वी वांट ईच पैच ऑफ 25 बाय 225 जस्ट मेक श्योर दैट दे बोथ आर डिविजिबल जस्ट दे आर कंप्लीटली डिविजिबल सो लेट्स से आई से 25 8 25 into 8 times became 200, so I cannot use 24 here. Otherwise, it would be an issue because each pixel can is like when you you cannot divide a pixel into half. Either it should be one or two. Okay, so it cannot be like 0.5 or 1.5. So just make sure that your input and patches are completely divisible with each other. In coding term. इमेज मोडुलस पैच साइज शुड बी इक्वल टू जीरो ओके जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस नाउ हाउ टू कैलकुलेट नंबर ऑफ पैचेस सो टू फाइंड नंबर ऑफ पैचेस व्हाट वी डू वी मल्टीप्लाई द हाइट एंड विथ ऑफ द इनपुट इमेज डिवाइड इट बाय द पैच हाइट मल्टीप्लाई बाय पैच विथ सो लेट्स डू दिस हियर 200 मल्टीप्लाई बाय 200 डिवाइडेड बाय 25 बाय 225 सो इट बिकेम 64 नाउ What you can do is you can pause the video and just check this calculation. <laughs> Now we have find the number of patches. Now the transform input. Now how we gonna uh, give input to to the transformer? So the input to the transformer is as follows. First we give it number of patches, then patch height multiplied by patch width, then number of ch ch channels. So here is the transform input, and at the end it became. Two fifty six by one eight seven five. Okay, I think there's a mistake here. If n refer to number, okay, it should be sixty four. Yeah, I think this is a mistake here. I've made. So just uh, I think you all will point out this in the comment box. So it should be number of patches. Just remember this formula: n comma patch height. into patch width into number of ch channels okay so this is how we proceed now let's move on to the implementation part let us open our atom text editor so first of all we are going to import the torch library okay then we'll start working on to some blocks okay so if you see the block diagram let's go back here so here we have some layers that is decon block we have and we have con so decon here refer to transpose convolution and we have this con block bn and relu so what we'll do we'll build some function that have all these layers so let's uh, do that first so our first function or the first class would be con block i'm going to simply copy paste them and explain them step by step so this makes the video short and most comprehensive and much better otherwise the videos are really long so first we have this uh, name of the block con block and it take input channel then output channel kernel size and the padding so by default we have some values for the kernel size and padding then we have this super because this con block is a sub class of this nn dot module class then we have these layers so first it is followed by the con layer it take number of input channel and the number of output channel then this kernel size and the padding after the con layer it is followed by the batch normalization and then the relu activation function so next we come to the forward function where the execution of these layers begin so we give it the input and it return the output so this is the con block next we have the decon block you can change the name accordingly okay just the imp the implementation or the logic which we follow should remain the same next we have decon block it take two argument the input channel and the output channels so here we have one layer only that is transpose convolution it take number of input channel then number of output channel so in the original paper if you see the kernel size for this decon layer is 2 by 2 okay because we are working with 
2D layer, so it would be 2 by 2, not 2 by 2, 2 by 2 by 2. Okay, we're gonna repeat it two times only. So here we are just provide an integer and just a single value to because it is for 2, 2D, it would automatically transform itself. Next we have stride equals to 2. So this stride equals to 2 means upsample the feature map by a factor of 2. So upsampling does not mean we are using bilinear upsampling or near nearest neighbor upsampling. Upsampling just basically means this cone transpose layer basically learns how to upsample it. Like what fe features to learn when upsampling. Okay. So it, the main thing is that it learns. Okay. And the learning part is basically a black box. We just we just can hypothesize that this is how it works. Okay. So let's say our input is like 64 by 64. When we give it to this decon or the transpose convolution layer, the output would be twice of 64 by 64. That is 128 by 128. So this is how it works. Now we'll move on to the implementation of our unit r 2d so now i'll start writing the code because here it is important to understand each thing step by step so i'll write the code myself here is cf so here cf refers to the configuration okay the con configuration basically contains the list uh, a dictionary of all the parameter that is path size hidden dimension number of layer number of head etc etc which we require okay so we're going to define the forward function here input x now what we'll do we'll define the con configuration file first So this is our config empty directionary after that we added these values in it and these are image size number of layer hidden dimension mlp that dimension number of head dropout number of patches so we have already calculated the number of patches patch size number of channels okay now let's also define an input so this is our input tensor so torch then we get 8 so 8 refers to the base batch size here then number of patches and after that we have patch size multiply by patch size and number of channel so if we go to the original formula here you can see n refers to the number of patches then patch height multiply by patch width and the number of channels so here both the height of patch and the width of patch are same that is why we just have only one single value that is patch size okay so let's print the shape of this x and see if things are working fine till now okay so it is 8 by 256 then 768 so this is the input that dimension and you can easily reshape it back to 8 by 256 by 256 by 3 okay now let's uh, move back on to our implementation so let's do one more thing so we can say model and we give it the input x okay now let's move to the implementation of this unit r so first of all we will have our patch embedding plus position embedding that is the first part of the transformers okay so what we'll do first we'll define a linear layer so we're going to call it self dot patch embed and it would be linear layer so we're going to say nn dot linear simple linear layer no activation function we're going to use so first of all the input so what is the input number of this is this path size by path size so i'm going to copy it and we're going to make some changes okay so this is the input for it here the name is ccf so we're going to change config to cf then what would be number of output feature that would be cf hidden dimension so this is done with simple linearly 
this layer is done now what we do here in the forward function we say patch embed equals to self dot patch embed and it's going to take let's change this name from x to inputs this because later we need to save this value of inputs so initially i'll rename it now let's print the shape of this patch embed because while implementing any architecture the shape is really important okay so this is 8 by 256 by 768 so what i'll do i'll simply paste it here now we need positional embedding okay because if we again go back to this vit see we have just done this part linear projection part we have done till. then now we need position embedding so we'll do one two three something like that so because we have extra embedding so we begin zero here but we begin now as zero one two okay both for classification we need extra embedding for classification purpose okay so what i'll do i'll will have a list of integers starting from zero to num patches minus one and here step equals to one means that it should be like zero one two three the difference between the two values and all the values sh should be of integer 32 next we need an embedding So we're going to say nn dot embedding number of inputs would be number of patches the input which is then output should be hidden damage now let's uh, go to the forward function and here what we'll do first we'll say positions oh, sorry equals to self dot positions then we say position embedding equals to self dot pose embedding and input would be positions okay now let's print the shape of this pose embed what it is okay it's 256 by 768 fine so till now we are working fine no error is there now what we'll do we'll add both the values so we say x equals to patch okay should be patch embed plus position embed okay so now we have the final final not final output just the output after this these let's say, these arrows so these would be input to the transformer encoder now so let's go back to the slide again okay if you here see we also have some skip connection in between which are used in the cnn decoder so it is z3 z6 z9 and z12 so if you remember we have 12 layers in our vit architecture so we need to save the output of these z third layer 6 7 and 9 because here the sequence is begin from one so it would be first second then third okay and when you work with programming things begin with zero so don't confuse it okay so what we'll do first of all we'll define this transformer layers okay so what i'll do i'll simply copy paste some values so first is this empty list so this list would contain all the transformer encoder layer so we have named it trans encoder layers okay so now what we'll do will say 4i in range so how many layers we require is cf num layers okay now we need we want to import this transformer encoder layer directly from the this torch.nn module now we don't need to implement this transformer encoder layer as it is already given in the pytorch library so we just need to give these values so first is d model that is hidden dimension then n head that means number of head then the dimension for the mlp or the feed forward and that we have in the mlp uh, dimension then dropout value then activation so 
transformer use gilu activation by default you can use relu also but i'll go with gilu or gilu and here i have set batch first equals to true now what we'll do we'll append this layer into this trans encoder layer okay so we are done with this part now we'll move on to the forward function okay here let me copy this okay let's just i have a habit of commenting out things usually i follow this thing like now it is develop as a habit i hope you should also develop so that when in the later after some time some few weeks a few months you see the code so at least you have something here so at least you know and here we have shapes also so so let's say a new person is saying so at, he should know that this kind of shape and this kind of shape we have so it would work like this okay so just develop it's a good habit for i here we also have a loop in self dot cf num layers okay so first of all go to the top and say self dot cf equals to ccf because now we require this configuration file here okay so first of all we extract the layer from the self trans encoder layer i <coughs> so x equals to layer and we give it the input x that is this x is also output because we are in loop now if i plus one why i plus one because it start with this zero okay we have just forgot one to do one thing these two indexes okay so let's begin from starting so here we have a index what skip connection we want to save so we want to save third six nine and twelve okay and this is the uh, list where we would save those feature maps okay that is the output of uh, transformer encoder so here we have we are looping we are we are uh, we are using a for loop then we extract each transformer encoder then we give it the input we get the output now we'll check if this i plus one appear in this so if i plus one in skip connection index if it is true then we say skip connections dot append x we are done very simple so now we are done with the transformer encoder part we'll go with the cnn decoder part okay so let's now go back to the diagram first okay so here we have first z12 okay and we pass it via the decon layer and now here you can see it is 16 by 16 it up samples and it decreases to 8 by 8 just ignore this d okay and number of features changes from 768 to 512 then we concatenate it here so z9 then passes via this blue box so blue refer to decon plus conv so after that we concatenate both of them okay so i hope you go, got this so we'll first do this first decoder and after concatenation we have some layer let's see them after we finish with the implementation of this part so first of all we need to define the layers first so what we'll do we say D cnn decoder and decoder one okay so first of all what we do we'll have a single decon okay this part okay we first define this decon only so we say self dot d1 equals to decon block so what would be the input input would be cf hidden di di dimension and output would be 512 these are the number of channels as input and output okay so we are done with this now we are going to work with this z9 part so what we have d cone block and a cone block so we're going to see it as s1 and we're going to say nn dot sequential because we have two blocks here so we'll write it inside the sequential block sequential layer decon block input would be hidden dimension 
okay and output would be 512 by 512 okay sorry it should be 512 not 512 by 512 then after this we follow a cone block okay input 512 then 512 so this is s1 and after we have concatenation after concatenation it is followed by the two cone block so now i'll, I'll simply copy it then so these these are the layers which we have defined for the decoder one now let's go to the scene in decoder and follow these things so let us first analyze all the input all the skip connection or this connection we use in the decoder for concatenation so we have four you can say four for the concatenation and one here at the end that is input z3 z6 z9 z12 and here you can see we need to reshape them properly to height width and number of channel here you can see height width number of channel height width number of channel so that is we need to do first before moving on to the layers of decoder one so first of all what we do we'll extract all the these features from this skip connection so these are z3 z6 z9 and z12 skip connection done now we'll work on the reshaping so first of all let's extract batch size say inputs dot shape so this is our batch number of batches this so first we'll work on the input this input so we're going to say call it as z0 this is for the easiness just for the cons inputs dot view okay so before that let me do one thing i'll print the shape okay inputs dot shape z third dot shape z6 dot shape z9 dot shape and z12 dot shape okay so let's follow this and see if we have any error okay here you can see so these are not in the form of height and width okay now we need to resize them to height and width because the convolution layer have a different format of input okay so what we'll do first of all we reshape this input and what would be shape the shape would be first the batch size and that is common for all then we have self dot cf number of channels then we have self dot cf image size and same we're gonna repeat again so we have reshaped this first so let me print okay so let us print it and see okay so here you can see it is 8 by 256 okay just a mistake let me remove this for now let's go one by one and instead of input i should put z0 i know the video is not going to find i understand like sometime i am not i'm confused while writing a lot of code. so now you can see easily this is the shape before reshaping and after reshaping we have got this so now it is number of channel height and the width same we need to do for the rest of the four features okay so let me comment it out because if you see above like here all the four features have same values they have same shape okay so this means they're gonna have same height and width and let me define that first so it should be first the batch size then self dot cf hidden dimension self dot sorry should be cf then path size and same we're going to repeat again so this this would be the this is would be the shape of those features so we say z third equals to z third dot bu then this shape so let me print z third here 
z third here and let's see if we are going fine or we have any error okay you can see we have re reshaped it without any issue let's remove this print statement because now things would be fine i'm simply going to copy it and change the name okay so we have reshaped them now we'll move on to the decoder one okay let's revise the layers so first we have d1 okay so d1 is z12 this single cone this d cone block then we have s1 so s1 is skip connect connection here and skip connection is z9 here so we have this d cone block d cone and then cone block then concatenation and after that we have two cone layers or blocks so let's move down so we're going to say x is to d1 z12 then s s1 this should be z9 then concatenate them it should be x comma s dimension is 1 then we have cone block a pair of cone block so now let's print the shape so let's print the shape let's check it here so here you can see it's 16 by 16 it should be 32 by 32 okay you can see 32 by 32 500 s number of channels so like this we have rest of the decoder so first of all we'll define the layers and then we'll execute them so what i'll do i'll co simply copy the decoder okay so this is decoder 2 so now first change is the number of input and the number of output features and second is the increase in the layers in the skip part that is s variable so here if you see this is the output of of the cone and and it act as the input for, for this d cone block okay then it is here it would be concatenated with this z6 so z6 passes we are two blue boxes this means cone layer d cone layer and a cone layer then again a d cone and a cone and rest is same again followed by two more and in the third decoder block these boxes are repeating three times so here you can see in decoder 2 a decone block same as above in s part that is skip part okay here you can see four layer decone block cone block decone block and a cone block and for the cone simple to cone block it is following these two yellow blocks so let's go to the next decoder 2 and i'm going to copy it again because i hope you understand it now now here the output of c1 act as the input for d2 then skip part which is z6 we passes to the s2 then we can concatenate both x and s and we pass this concatenated output to this cone layer let's uh, print the shape okay this time it's 64 by 64 and number of output feature channel are 256 okay so like this we would have decoder third also so let me copy uh, these layers so again this decone block is same so let me go to this diagram so here the output of these cone block would pass to the decone block which have sampled it by a factor of 2 then here we have z third now here we, we would have 6 layers and we concatenate and followed by this 2 yellow block that is 2 cone block so let me again go back so you can see we have d cone block then we have this skip which have 6 layer you can see d cone cone d cone 
and a con and a d con and a con so this is a sequence which is re repeating itself then in then after that it is followed by two con blow so it is really simple so instead what we gonna do i'm gonna copy the layers here okay so this is decoder third the output of c2 that is x act as the input for this d third then z third pass via this s third layer then we concatenate both of them and we pass them via this c third that is the two cone block now let's run this program okay so this is working fine now we have this fourth one here if you see the output of this cone block we passes via this d cone now here in the input we do not need to upsample it it's exactly of same size as the output of this decon block so what we need to do we need to take the reshaped input pass it via this two cone block concatenated followed them again by two cone block and then a one by one cone so let us follow this sequence so what we have is decoder four here yeah. so this time i'll write it okay so for decoder four we have d4 first we have the decon block where this is the output the output from this block would act as the input for this block so 128 comma 64 128 input number of channel output number of channel would be 64 then we have skip s4 let's say so let me go back to the diagram and it is two cone block see so what it is two cone block it is so you say this so now number of input for the first cone block is according to the number of channel in the input image and here we are using rgb okay then number of output channel then input channel and output channel and after that we have c4 okay you see after concatenation it is followed by again two cone block so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this code and paste it and i'm going to rename it to c4 then so this is the decoder fourth so i'm going to copy paste it okay so this is the decoder fourth first output of c third x passes to the d4 it's upsampled then it takes z0 which is the input which we have reshaped to height and width then passes through this s4 then we concatenate both of them and then pass them via the c4 layer okay so decoder part is done now what we need to do the output of this second cone block would pass via this cone one by one so this last layer is the classification not the classification the segmentation layer it produces the output mask so what we do we're gonna say output let me capital this O and we're gonna say output and then dot cone 2D number of input channels 64 number of output 1 then kernel size equals to 1 padding equals to 0 now here also you see output output is equal to self dot output and the input will be x that's the output of c4 now we're going to give this output as back so we are done with our this unit r 2d this so this class for this model is completed with the implementation now we'll take the output and we'll print it whether we see a mask of proper shape or not okay so we have some issue so let's check and uh, i think it start with c4 and yeah it can have some issue with c4 i simply copy pasted it okay yeah it should have some issue okay got it 
so c4 is used let me show you why we have this error so c4 is used after the concatenation so concatenation is between x and the s x comes from the d4 and s comes from the s4 so let's check it so the output of d4 is would have a number of features 64 and the output of S4 would have a number of features 64. So it should be 64 plus 64 like we have above. Okay, so this is the error we have. So let's run it again. See error handling is also an important part of programming. How you gonna read this and find where the error. So this is a skill you learn over time. Okay, and this is not you gonna learn within a day or weeks. This is just a practice and you will learn it over time. So this is the output mask. So here we have 8 as the batch size. Let me go below. Okay. And now these are this is the same height and width as the input. See the image size is 256. So this is what we want. And we have finally got our segmentation mask. So this is the implementation of unit R. Okay. So this last slide is left. The this is transform and encoder. We haven't uh, like implemented it because the uh, torch, the PyTorch library already provide the implementation of transformer encoder. So I don't think we need to implement it. So I haven't gone to this line. But in short, this is the sequence. So first we have the input. It passes via this norm. Norm here is layer normalization. Then we have multi-head attention, and then we have one residual block. We add add the both. Then the added uh, tensor passes through the layer normalization. Then MLP. So in MLP, we use Chilu activation. This is the default activation function used in transformer. And then again we add both the values. The output of MLP and this input to to this second norm layer. And we get the output of this transformer encoder block. So this is that is a short overview of the transformer encoder block. This multi-head attention is, is itself a big topic and can be covered in another video. If you want a topic or a, a video on multi-head attention, understanding and implementation, just comment it down. I'll make a video on it also. So, thank you. If you have any more questions, please email me. Follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn. And please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.